This video was made by using a copy of the February 21st, 2018 PowerPoint presentation given to the recently appointed members of the Utility Rates Stakeholders Committee. The agenda for that evening was a regulatory presentation by Cassie Calhoun, State Water Resources Control Board, a TCP technical memorandum by Alfonso Manrique from the City Engineering, and the proposed corrective action plan. What is one, two, three? three trichloropropane, the extent of groundwater contaminated with TCP, how much TCP is in our wells, the compliance determinations, and what should residents do until treatment is installed. What is 1,2,3-TCP? It was used as an industrial solvent and for degreasing and was an ingredient in soil fumigants widely used for many decades. It moves to groundwater aquifers with little soil absorption. Reasonably anticipated to be a human carcinogen, that means cancer-causing agent. It was added to the state's list of chemicals known to cause cancer and is based on long-term exposure for a period of 70 years. The extent of groundwater contaminated with TCP, this is based on 2001 through 2015 data, 471 wells with confirmed detections above five parts per trillion. Here is a map based on that data, you can see all of those little red dots going up and down the central value, valley. Those are locations where wells were tested and found to contain TCP. Central Valley sources with average TCP concentration above five parts per trillion based on that 2001 through 2015 data. Once again, you can look at the locations and see all of those little red dots all up and down the Central Valley. The maximum contaminant level for TCP was established by the Water Resources Control Board and adopted in December 14, 2017, which goes into effect on January 1, 2018. The maximum contaminant level, they have this 0 0.005 UG per L. You know, that to me, I hate decimals. I call it an ugly number. It's the same as five parts per trillion. This is the historical data about Livingston's water system and how many times past the maximum contaminant level some of our wells are. And if you can see, you can see on the very far right, 52 times above, 28 times above, 4.6. 48 times above, 16.4 times above, 104 times above, and so on. The bottom line summary, all wells except wells number 11 and 15 are greater than 10 times the maximum contaminant level. Every well is impacted by the maximum contaminant level. And all wells except number 11 and well 15 will be out of compliance with the state by April 1st, 2018. Wells with TCP greater than four times the maximum contaminant level are immediately out of compliance. Wells with TCP greater than the maximum contaminant level they need to commence monitoring with six months of monitoring. 
Enforcement actions. Well, Livingston will get a compliance order, which requires a correction action plan and quarterly progress reports and quarterly public notification and quarterly proof of public notification and establishes a return to compliance date, typically three years from the date of the order. In other words, within three years from the date of the order, Livingston has to have the filtration on the wells to get that TCP level down. This is an example of the kind of uh, notification that is supposed to go out to the public. Uh, this is the secondary notification requirements about the, what schools are supposed to do, residential rental property owners are supposed to do, and business property owners are supposed to do. So, what should we do? And remember, this was as of 2018. Develop a public outreach plan. Schools. Special drinking water for school grant funds. Apply for grant funds. Request technical assistance to apply. And request alternate supply and or treatment until the city is in compliance. So basically, here's the summary. The city of Livingston will be out of compliance. The state will issue a compliance order. Public notification will be required. And that notice will indicate there is an increased cancer risk. The first notice was due by April 30th, 2018. And return to compliance deadline will be determined likely April 30th, 2021. And schools need to seek interim solutions. So here we go. Now we go to the TCP technical memorandum. Uh, this one is just about, this page is the, how much does the city use in water? And that the average water demand has decreased 17% since 2013. So what's the source of the city supply? Nine active wells. Uh, this slide shows the location of the different wells across the city, those little red triangles. And the blue triangle is where the 1 million gallon storage tank is. This one is about just the production capacity of each well. The proposed corrective action plan. What is the city doing to comply with the TCP contaminant level? We have an existing well number eight. That's the one over by Foster Farms that has a TCP removal treatment facility on it. What the city wants to do, project number one, centralized treatment at well number 16. Project number two, centralized treatment at Arcalian Park with a storage tank. Project number three, a centralized treatment at well number eight plus a storage tank. And project number four, obtain a surface water supply. This is about the well number eight TCP removal treatment facility. Kind of gives you an idea what it kind of looks like. And once again, I'm going to remind you, this is the one over by Foster Farms. Project number one, a construction of a treatment system at well number 16, and then construct a pipeline from well 14 to well number 16. It'll be about a $4.0 million project. They're hoping to get the money from the state revolving loan fund. Okay, this again, this kind of shows what they're trying to do or planning to do. And the floor plan, so to speak, of what it would look like. Project number two, centralized treatment at Arcalian Park. Construct a treatment system, construct a pipeline from well 13 to Arcalian Park, 
construct a pipeline from well 17 to Arcalian Park, construct a 1.5 million gallon storage tank, and construct a booster pump station. Expected to cost 8.5 million. Once again, the city hopes to get it from the revolving loan fund from the state and they hope to complete it by 2021. This is be the like you could call it the floor plan where they're in looking to pipe water into Arcalian Park from the other wells. And once again, this is kind of a diagram of what it should look like. Project number three, centralized treatment at well number eight. Construct two more treatment trains at well number eight. Construct a pipeline from well number nine to well number eight. Construct a 1.5 million gallon storage tank and a booster pump station. This is expected to cost about 3.5 million. Again, hoping to get another loan from the state and get it finished by 2021. So this is what it's going to look like from above, showing where they're expecting to pipe water in from the from another well. Project number four, surface water treatment. Construct a horizontal collector near the river. Construct a wa raw water transmission pipeline. Construct a 3.0 million gallon surface water treatment plant. And construct construction of a treated water transmission pipeline to well number eight storage tank. This project is expected to be around $14 million, once again, funded through a revolving loan fund and hope to get it completed by 2030. This kind of gives an overview of from where they want to get the water and to where they want to put the water. So this is just a summary of how much it's going to cost in order to get Livingston's water supply to where it's enough to supply everything and how much it's going to cost. The total cost to address current demand is about $16 million and future demand they, another $14 million on top of that. Okay. All right, questions. If you have any questions about this presentation, there is a phone number where you can call Alfonso. There's also the email address to which you can email. So what do you think? Now I will point out that city councils have known since at least 2004 or so that this day was coming. After all, TCP contamination was the reason behind the lawsuits against Dow and others begun back in 2005. Then there were all the other reports, enforcement letters and studies that took place then thereafter. There is enough material there for a whole separate video, which I hope to get done before the next Proposition 218 hearing date. I will also remind everyone that Mayor Samra had been appointed to the Stakeholders Committee in 2018, and nothing was stopping him from legally being able to attend meetings afterwards, even after the seat was later handed off to Mayor Pro Tem Garcia. I also want to remind everyone that County Supervisor Espinoza had volunteered to be appointed to this committee as well. He too had access to the same information that any other member of the committee was given, in addition to all the other information he'd been given over the years as either a member of the council or as mayor. 
While you're here, you might also want to check out some of the other links in the description below. I am including links to the 2018 appointments to the Utility Rates Stakeholders Committee, the most recent utility rates presentation given to the Council, an article about California's Sustainable Groundwater Management Act, and the contact information for the Chief, County Supervisor, City Manager, and City Council members. Until next time, this is the Gardening Snail of Livingston, California, because not every critter is hiding under a rock.